Welcome everyone. This painting took roughly two hours to complete and in this episode we'll break down the main steps of the process from initial sketch to final image. So stay tuned till the end to check the final result. My name is Victor, I'm a concept artist working in the video games industry and I hope you'll enjoy this video and find it helpful. Alright, let's start. So the first thing I usually do is establish the horizon line and then I'm using all my references, everything I gathered up so far and try to compose the whole scene, the focal point, the environment, maybe a little bit of storytelling. The sketch you see me doing is really rough because I'm not planning to keep the line work for too long. As soon as I have my colors and my values blocked in, I'm gonna ditch the line work and work with form mostly. And also right now I'm keeping everything on separate layers just in case I want to change or improve the composition later on. I keep the horsemen and the main planes on different layers, it might help as well. Alright, so where do we go from here? I personally start with the sky or the clouds or anything in the background just to establish the overall mood and the light scenario. At this stage I use flat color to fill in my main planes and make sure that the values work nicely. As soon as you have some value you can work from there and constantly compare and check how readable is your image, how is the composition serving the storytelling and so on. At this stage you should also pay attention to the shapes you create. Right now I work with flat color and trying to compose the image so it checks all the points I mentioned before. I'm still working on the background, deciding what value and color to use for those mountains in the distance and I think overall I wanted to have a bright warm scene uh, but with some cold variation in the shadows. And while moving on to the horseman, I'm still keeping things flat and I'm working on the shapes, values and nothing more. I wanted also to have maybe some vibrant, slightly colder shadow areas in the grass to complement the overall warm colors. Now I'm introducing smaller shapes inside our main silhouettes and also establishing the color hues I want, basically separating the guy on the horse, the cape, some elements of clothing and so on. And I'm also not using the heavily textured brushes or you know everything with bristle and stuff like that. I'm still trying to make use of the basic round brush in Photoshop. Now it's time to work on the second rider and probably after this I will remove the line work I had, the sketch, because I probably should have done it earlier but I just wanted to have just a tiny bit of guidance uh, with this horseman in the foreground. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on describing the form because this is basically a rough sketch overall and I have to work on the whole image. I'm just gonna try to use you know as little values as possible to describe the shape, the form and to kind of give an idea who's there and you know what he's doing. I'll leave it like this for now and move on to the clouds, to the background area and I'll be back for the characters as soon as I'll have a little bit of clarity in the rest of the image as well. Another thing worth mentioning is that after I removed the line work sketch I had in the beginning and after I blocked in my uh, main shapes and planes with color and uh, value, there's not really a strict way you have to follow in order to polish and finish this image. And what I mean by that mostly is that there are so many ways you can proceed with your image. You can start with your background and gradually add details uh, towards your foreground or you can establish where is your focal point and add information there and then gradually expand throughout the whole canvas. Now me personally I like to establish my focal points first and make sure that I have enough visual interest, enough information in there to keep the viewer's eye a little bit longer but then of course you need to balance it out with areas of rest and make sure that your composition is dynamic enough that it will allow the viewer's eye to travel throughout the whole image. Now I'm going to spend some time on my focal point, specifically these two horsemen. I guess it's worth saying that I knew that this is going to be a sketch, a mood painting so to speak, and if this would have been a concept piece, right, or I would have an assignment to design a character and its mount for example, then I would definitely approach the phase of you know describing the structure way more careful than I'm doing it right now. Right now I'm being kind of a little bit reckless, but in general if you know that your image is going further in the pipeline, right, there is a whole bunch of people from you know the 3D team 
um, gonna work with it, then you have to make sure that the way you describe forms, the way you're describing skeletal information, how you place everything in 3D, that's really, really important. It has to be accurate, it has to be informative, and it has to be helpful for the other people to continue work with it. And the sketch that I'm doing right now would definitely fit pre-production assignments like uh, establishing some keyframes, maybe establishing some story beats, or overall the mood of the environment, things like that. And now let's quickly talk about the layers in Photoshop and how do I manage them. And to be honest, it's pretty straightforward. I do have some layer separation because I want my main elements to be separate in case I want to address some changes. And the way they are positioned is the same way I structured the whole environment, right? On the bottom, there is the background, the skies, the clouds, the, the, the big mountain, and then there's the middle ground and then the foreground. And there aren't any blending options switch on in the layer system as well. Mainly because this type of sketch doesn't really require it, but there are definitely images where you want to have a consistent lighting, for example, across the whole canvas, and you can make really good use of all those various blending options that Photoshop, for example, offers the multiply, soft light, hard light, you know, overlay, all that stuff. And if we talk about the number of layers, sometimes you might have like this really heavy illustration assignment, and you know there's going to be a lot of rounds of feedback then you can probably also increase the amount of layers you have because it will be easier to return back in time and to fix something, adjust or remove altogether if there is such, uh, you know, if there is such a requirement. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps a lot. Also, if you have any questions about the process, don't forget to drop them in the comment section. I'm trying to answer all of them. Thank you again so much and I hope to see you in the next video coming soon.